Now we are going to select and run a test. Just to summarize what we've done so far, we first opened the application and connected to the chassis and reserved the ports. Since we're using the OSPF V3 conformance test suite as an example, it uses up to three ports. So I selected the appropriate ports. Once connected, I'm going to configure the ports. So I'm going to collapse the conformance test suites and select each port and set up the appropriate physical layer parameters. All three ports will be copper running at 100 meg full duplex. Now I'm going to select the test suite. In this example, I'm going to be using the OSPF B3 test suite, and I'm going to load the test suite. Once loaded, I'm going to set the parameters. Right now, I'm using configuration 1. I'm going to go ahead and set to default. I'm also going to be using DUT automation. So I'm going to browse to my DUT automation file. I need to change the file type to XML and select my DUT configuration XML template. And since I'm using default parameters, that's all I need to do for my set parameters. I need to map my ports to my PCOs. In this case, test configuration one only uses a single port associated with all three PCOs. Before I select and run tests, I need to load my DUT configuration file. And now my IUT connection and my test configuration and my action IDs will be set properly. I need to initially run my DUT test configuration one, so I'm going to sync with IDUT. So you can see it's opening up a Telnet session, and it's going to configure for test configuration one via the parameters in the XML file. First goes into enabled mode. and then configuration terminal mode. And now it starts to apply the configuration parameters. I'll point out that when you run a test scenario, it will automatically sync with DUT for you. But since we're running these configuration tests manually, then we need to sync with DUT manually as well. So now it's done configuring, and it disconnected from the IUT automatically. I'm ready to select and run my tests. For this example, I'm only going to use three test cases. I'm going to start with test case 114, which does not require any user interaction. Next, I'm going to run test case 115, which does require user interaction. Next, I'm going to go to 3215. And the reason I'm going to go to 3215 is because I know that test case will fail, and so we'll be able to see that and determine why. So once I've selected all my test cases, I can go ahead and run those test cases, starting with test case 114, 
and so I'm going to click start and now you can see how test case 114 has an icon indicating that it's running so as you can see in the status bar it's now automatically applied the objects each test case is going to take some time to run because it has to go through the adjacency parameters and sometimes wait for dead timers to expire or various functions of the state machine to complete. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to where this test case is complete and it's picked up with test case 115. Okay, now you can see that test case 114 has completed and the icon has changed indicating that and now test case 115 has started. Also test case 114 was successful so it has a green check. So as you can see the IUT automation for user interaction is automatic because test case 115 requires user interaction and so it's automatically executing the Telnet script. So even when you run the test manually where you have to sync with DUT manually, the user interaction commands will, will be automatic instead. So now the user interaction commands are applied so the test can continue running. While this is running, I'm also going to point out that you can view the results of the previous test case. Go to your runtime results and then select that test case. So you can construct so you can scroll through the test case runtime results. I'm not going to go through all these right now but you can see each one you can expand and you have very high level detail about the messages and events that were occurring. You could also look through your ladder diagram that was built based on the hello exchanges or the events that occurred during the test. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this to when test case 115 is complete. So now test case 115 is complete. It should be picking up and running test case 3215. And now we can see that is the case. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this until test case 3215 is complete. So as you can see test case 3215 is complete but its icon is indicating that it failed. Also notice that since all three test cases were completed as indicated in the ex execution status that our test is done and now the start button is available that we could rerun the test case. But let's go ahead and look at the results in more detail and determine why test case 3215 failed. So we can start by going to our execution summary and there we can just see the three test cases we ran and the verdict of test case, three, of test case 3215 which was failed. Let's now go to the results tab and we're going to drill into more about why test case 3215 failed. So you'll notice that there are a number of results loaded here because I had run the test before. But I'm going to go to the most current results and you can see at a high level it says two passed, one failed. And now we can select the failed test case and of course we know the verdict has failed but let's try to determine why so I mentioned the summary also gives you details of everything that was happening during the test and we could scroll through there and try to determine why it failed but an easier way to do that would be to go to the ladder diagram 
and find where the failure occurred. Notice we have a preliminary pass, and if I click on there, it takes us directly to the event that passed, and that is because the database exchange was complete. In other words, we were able to come to a full adjacency. But let's scroll down farther to where it failed. If I click on the failure, again, it jumps me down to where that event occurred. And now let's open up and look at the trace info. And it gives actually gives us the detail, the network LSA with expired age not received from the IUT. So now we have a very good indication as to why it failed. If you're wondering, well, why was that a condition of this test case? You could always go back to your testing. Under your select and run tests. And notice the objective of that test case was to verify that in a full state, when the IUT is no longer a DR, after the neighbor change event, it should flush the previously originated network LSA. And so again, you go back to the results. And it says network LSA with expired age not received from the IUT. So the last thing I'll point out is how you can save results. You can save an individual test case result by selecting it and selecting save. And notice it's going to save it in the format of an XML file that then you can share it with somebody else and they can load it in and view this same information, the summary and detailed events, as well as a ladder diagram. Or you can select an entire set of tests and generate a report. And notice it's actually going to create HTML reports. And I'm just going to call this OSPFV3 and save that. And now we should be able to browse to where that was saved. So again, it, generally things are under My Documents, Spirant, Spirant Conformance Application. And then here we have exported results. And then we can select the most current results we say, the OSPF v3, and I'm going to open that. And notice you have all your information about the tests, all your PIXITs that were configured. And then for each test case, you can click and open up that test case separately. Then you can sc scroll through and look at the details of the test case. So saving it this way saves the entire test execution and the associated test case. So all you have to do then is share this HTML file as well as the folder of files that were saved when you exported the results to the HTML.